Hello and welcome to Diplomata. I'm Francis Sunni. The development in Timor-Leste in the past decade has been focusing heavily on infrastructure. The country's national development strategic plan has defined roads, electricity, transport and communication to be some of the highest priorities. In developing this sector, Timor-Leste has not been alone in doing it, but has been working hand in hand with its both national and international partners. One of Timor-Leste's biggest international partner has been the Asian Development Bank. In this episode, I'll be speaking to the diplomat who is currently leading the ADB Timor-Leste, as well as a number of his staff, to tell us about what ADB has been doing since its presence in Timor-Leste. Paulus Pantigatti, Country Director, Asian Development Bank Timor-Leste Resident Mission. His role is to delivery of the annual investment and technical assistance program, oversight of overall investment portfolio of infrastructure project of about $300 million, comprising roads, water supply and sanitation, education facilities, coordination with the government, development partners, civil society and the management of the overall office. He started work with the ADB since early January 2002 in Manila, Philippines as a project economist. Five years later, he was assigned as a principal country specialist in ADB's Nepal resident mission. Continue work with ADB in India country office for three years as principal public-private partnerships specialist and back to Manila to continue work as principal public-private partnerships specialist for the duration of one year. Prior to his work with the ADB, he had already worked for various organizations such as European Commission, Italian Central Bank, IFAD, FAO with different responsibilities. Paulus Pantigati holds a graduate economics, laurea in Economia e Commercio, 110 by 110 summa cum laude, at the University of Rome, La Sapienza, November 1988. Italian diploma as Dottore Commercialista, Certified Public Accountant, April 1990. He speaks French, English, Spanish, and German. Thank you very much for joining the program. Perhaps we could begin with a little bit of your background, your childhood, your education, your upbringing. Sure. Well, I am Italian. I was born in Rome, raised in Rome. I did my study in economics in Rome. And after graduating, I started in the Central Bank of Italy. But then I was always uh, interested and attracted in international economics, development economics. So I moved and I went to join the European Commission where I spent uh, some four years working on uh, Eastern European countries before the accession to Europe. After um, after uh, that uh, stint in uh, Brussels, I actually still felt it wasn't international enough. So I actually worked for a couple of years for International Fund for Agriculture Development and a little bit for FAO. And then I joined the Asian Development Bank in 1999. Since then, I've always worked for the ADB, uh, partly in Manila and partly in the ADB's resident missions. So I've actually spent uh, six years in Nepal, I spent uh, three years in India, and it's been almost three years I'm now in Timor-Leste. Personally, was there any particular motivation for you to work in third world countries like Timor-Leste? Well, I think it was an interest in uh, applying my education and my work experience into something which uh, has some important and concrete results. So the idea to help countries which are on the path of development to achieve a better life, to achieve greater levels of uh, development, to achieve greater wealth and welfare. So I think that was the interest, apart from the personal interest of course, to experience, you know, different realities, different culture, which is always personally enriching. So I think the balance, work-wise and personally, I've always enjoyed very much. And I think it's a privilege 
to be in, here in Timor-Leste and to work for the country. What are the differences do you find between the, the first two world countries in which you have been working in and also with, with the, the third world countries you have been uh, working on as well? I think we dwell a lot on the differences, maybe they're not that great. I think it's, I see it more as a sort of a continuum and a path and I think different countries are at different levels of development of their infrastructure, development of their social compact, development of a welfare state. So obviously in developing countries all this is still sort of something to be fully acquired and developed. But on the other end, it's also interesting because you can, in a sense, avoid certain mistakes or certain um, paths which maybe uh, didn't end up being so uh, beneficial in some so-called first world countries. What brought you to ADB? What was the main motivation? Uh, I think it was 99, so had, I had already been working on development, integration, international economics. I think back then, already personally, I felt that where most energy, where things were really happening was Asia. Even back then, I, I, I could really sense. and so. I jumped on the opportunity to experience again personally and work-wise. It's a region which is thriving, where it's so much, which is both such a long history and also such a trajectory yet to be achieved. So I think I really sort of jumped into the opportunity of moving east and, and learning a little bit about Asia. And in your view, what's unique about ADB? What is unique, I think it's this blend of being an international development organization, but with a very strong Asian identity. So, yes, of course, as, as myself, there are many colleagues coming from European countries or North America, but still I would say the, the core of the institution has very strong Asian features. So I think, I think this is the challenge of uh, of today and of the future, how to integrate different cultures, different aspects, how to bring the best out of the West, which maybe economically has moved a little bit faster in comparison to many other countries, together with the values and the culture and the dynamism of Asia. So this blending and getting hopefully the best out of it is, I think, the challenge we face. And moving from advanced and developed countries to less developed countries must have been a tremendous change or a transition uh, for anyone who is experiencing. How about you, your own experience? Um, yes, obviously there are certain things that I, I was brought up thinking they were basically uh, you know, normal daily feature. But I must say maybe because I'm Italian, I can, I could relate and I can still relate a lot. I think maybe Italy has a little bit of, is in a sense a little bit less European and more, um, uh, yeah, there's still many features, the culture, the family, the personal values are so strong. On the other end, maybe, let's say from the organizational point of view, efficiency, we probably still have a little bit of road to trod ourselves. So it was a challenge, but actually not as great as I would have thought maybe. So it's probably more a little bit, yes, I would say the infrastructure or certain level of uh, services. But uh, from the point of view of a society, of the cultures, I, I didn't feel really that far from home. And um, could you also share with us some of the highlights um, of your, your work, the success stories, perhaps, uh, in your career with ADB? Sure. 
I, I must say, maybe because I'm in Timor-Leste. So I start on the 1st of August, 99, and I still remember very precisely and distinctively where I was sitting for lunch, where at the end of a month, all colleagues came buzzing. And at the time I was working on some projects in Indonesia, they came buzzing with news about the referendum. And that plunged me immediately into this very different context and the challenges of the region. So that's something I still remember very distinctively. Uh, what are the, some highlights? Uh, I would say working on Indonesia on the big decentralization was very interesting. And I think all in all, the challenges were tremendous, but it is a success story. I think uh, the challenges have been overcome and decentralization is a positive feature. I then worked on a number of uh, rural projects for um, the Philippines and I think I was very proud to be able to deliver small infrastructure, small roads, markets, facilities to very remote communities in the Philippines. And then in South Asia, I worked six years in Nepal, uh, there were tremendous challenges, it's another country facing uh, quite a little bit of a development path. I was very proud that we introduced some very um, socially conflict sensitive approaches to our project, as well as strengthening our uh, disaster risk reduction and climate change. So uh, I would really say highlights are wherever I was able to contribute to improve the quality of what ADB does. You're working with a number of Timorese in your office. How have you found, uh, how has it been working with your Timorese counterparts in the office? I, I think it's, um, there are challenges in being in Timor-Leste. There are certain times we miss certain things, but definitely the human side, it's, a, it's probably, it's definitely a plus. Uh, people are very warm, welcoming, there is, very warm atmosphere. It's, I would say, almost more a family than a, a work environment, which for me is very important. It's very nice that every day I go to the office with a positive feeling, happy to meet my colleagues. So it's been really excellent. We daily face some challenges, again, trying to help developing uh, Timor-Leste. And so I think we're all in this together, and that's a pleasant feeling away from work. How about family life? Family life, well, my family is uh, in Italy, as well as my pets. I have uh, quite a few of them. I have six dogs, I have one goose, I have um, um, birds, I have many animals. They're all waiting for me in, in Italy, in Rome. So, but here I found a very pleasant environment. Again, both Timorese friends, other uh, friends from Italy and other countries. So, uh, I don't miss it too much. But I guess you are Timorese, you can relate. Still, this family bond, sometimes I miss a little bit. So, I, I'm happy enough to be able to go back home and, and meet with my relatives and my close friends once a year. Since you have been away from Italy, how often uh, do you go back to, to Italy? Uh, as I mentioned, probably, let's say, once a year. Whenever I manage, maybe a little bit more often. But uh, definitely at least once a year I have to go back to, as I say, family, friends, my cappuccinos, my food, my regular habits. I do miss that a little bit. Just to finish this conversation, if it was your decision, where would you want to be uh, after your posting in Timor-Leste? Ah, that's a good question. It's, it's hard every... Actually, it's interesting that before going to Nepal, I had never been there. Before coming to Timor-Leste, I had never been here before. And I was right away posted. So what I mean to say is you end up finding things different from what you expected, more interesting. So it's hard to say from um, beforehand, but uh, I definitely do like a lot working in Southeast Asia, so possibly somewhere else in Southeast Asia. Uh, 
There are so many places in Asia, there are so many challenges. I am really open to whatever life will bring me. And if you had a chance to come back to Timor-Leste, would you? Would you decide to come back to Timor-Leste? Of course, as long as ADBs felt useful and uh, of course as long as I'm felt uh, useful and welcome, it's uh, a, a very pleasant place. And if not for work, I'll definitely come back just to see friends and see how things are uh, going. You're still with me, Francis Uni, on Diplomata. Mr. Paolo, I will begin with asking you about your, your average day. What do you do in your office? Average day? Uh, let's start before the office. I normally wake up around 5.36. I just have breakfast, uh, take care of a few animals living around my area and then I come to office normally starting around 8, 8 8.30. Uh, our headquarters is in Manila, so we're one hour behind, so normally that gives me one hour, one and a half to handle things in the office, things left over from the day before, appointments, getting in touch with common counterparts. And then normally we start working together with Manila, our headquarters offices, meetings. Normally I have around three to four meetings with government sometimes going and seeing some projects and uh, normally around let's say six o'clock in the afternoon the day sort of wraps up unless it's a particularly challenging day and how many staff do you work with in the office of timor leste so we have around 10 adb staff and then we have uh, a number of other supports the supporting staff contractual consultant so all in all in the office we must have around 20 people something like that what projects are you working on at the moment uh, with ADB at the moment our existing portfolio it's uh, focus on infrastructure so we are financing a number of road constructions of the government as well as we have in a, still one project in water supply and we have uh, helped building a water supply system in Manatutu and Pante Makassar. So this is the existing projects, but we're working with the government to develop maybe new projects in new areas. And um, how have you found working with the government of Timor-Leste? Has it been working well or uh, has it been challenging? I would say both in the sense it's amazing how uh, friendly and warm uh, both Timorese counterparts for government but Timorese people in general are. It's very nice to feel so welcome in Timor-Leste. Challenging because obviously in the country there are still many challenges. Uh, the country is very new. It's the newest country in Asia. The institutions are still building their capacity, there are infrastructure needs, so there are challenges, but in a sense, that's what we're here for, to help the government overcome the challenges, and I'm confident it will take a little bit of time, but uh, things will just be going uh, well, and uh, development is progressing well. And um, in terms of good governance of the projects, um, what do you do to ensure that the, the projects are working, are beneficial to, to the people of Timor-Leste? I think good governance, uh, basically, it's covered in three, say, three manners. One is in preparing it. So for any project that is financed by ADB, we do quite a thorough due diligence. So both in terms of identification of the beneficiaries, estimate of the cost, of the benefits. We make sure there is no negative impact from the environment point of view or the social point of view. So all the affected population, as a result, must be better off. So some people may be affected, for example, when you build a road, but within the project itself, we design ways to make sure they get compensated. 
and they're better off. So in the preparation, we ensure maximum standards of good governance. In the implementation, we, all of our projects do foresee a very close monitoring. So we have, for example, again in, in the water or in the road projects, we have um, independent engineers supporting the management function of the government. We also carried out our own uh, review missions, so we have a constant uh, oversight. The implementation also foresees very strict procurement processes, so whoever is called to implement projects is the best, best qualified, most economic uh, sort of uh, construction company or consultant. So, we cannot derogate from uh, absolute uh, maximum standards of procurement. And at the end, also, we, it doesn't end there. For us, the project doesn't end when it's constructed. The benefits have to last throughout the envisioned, anticipated length of the project. For example, a road is expected to sort of exist and bring benefits for 20, 30 years. So we have also ex post evaluations, we have completion reports, and they feed into the process. So we work with the government to ensure maximum due diligence and good standards of good governance. There are also other financial institutions uh, in the country, such as the World Bank. How do you work together? How do you make sure that your, uh, your work are, uh, are well coordinated rather than uh, looking sporadic uh, with, with the other institutions that are working in Timor as well? Sure, and that's something which doesn't only concern Timor-Leste. Wherever we work, first of all, ADB, uh, maybe also being the Asian uh, Development Bank, we very strongly believe and abide to the principle of country-owned, country-led development. So what you were saying, this function of coordinating and assigning particular priorities to particular uh, development agent, we think be belongs to the government. But we help, so we help both in terms of uh, building the capacity of the government, as well as providing all the information and all all what uh, you know our planning uh, entails. So whenever we plan our activities, we work very closely with the government and development partners to make sure there is a clear allocation and no overlap. However, actually there is benefit in having more development partners. For example, in road, there is a very close coordination among all development partners together with the government. So whenever there are issues, very often they don't only affect ADB roads, ADB finance roads, they also affect World Bank finance road or other development partners. So by working together, we think this can bring better solutions and helps the government to address the challenges. What distinguishes you from the other institu the international institutions, especially the finan financial institutions in Timor-Leste? I think uh, in, in general terms, uh, the Asian Development Bank has this image of a family doctor. We believe that uh, Timor-Leste being a shareholder of a bank, we've been regionally based, we can be very close and listen and understand the local problems of the countries we work with. So that is something we think uh, that we can bring, which is a little bit uh, special. Otherwise, obviously, as I said, we coordinate the areas of operation, so we make sure that even if in, in certain respect we can be reasonably similar, there is no overlap, no sort of um, duplication but we work each in the areas where we feel more confident and we have more experience. How do you ensure that your work, your projects are in line with Timor-Leste's own national strategic development plan? Our project cycle actually takes a little bit of time and sometimes our uh, um, member countries complain about that, but that's precisely for that. So when we first start thinking out about new projects, we make sure 
we fit with the country strategy. We have annual programming exercises where we meet with the Minister of Finance as well as the line agency where we discuss how it fits with the government strategic plan and we make sure again what we do is fully aligned. So in the whole preparation of any new project there are so many instances where we work with the government and we seek the government views, we seek the government confirmation that uh, there is almost no possibility that we do not align with the country's strategic development plan. And um, what do you do uh, since Timor-Leste uh, has gone through a, number, a few changes of governments? And Timor-Leste is vulnerable to changes of policies, uh, even politics, when it comes to a change of government. In that situation, what do you do uh, with the projects? Have you experienced uh, changes of policy in re related or relevant to your projects uh, when there, wo there, there was a change of government? Sure, I think by definition any new government has some particular uh, policies, some priorities. Obviously, every government has its own vision. So what we do is that we keep a constant dialogue. So we make sure to the extent it's feasible and it makes sense, we realign and we work together. But I would put it also the other way. For us, we are a development agency. We look at really the constraint to growth, to, I would even say, to happiness of the Timorese people. So for us, uh, we really look at the, the basic needs and how to overcome them. So we think we can also play a role in a sense of anchoring. So infrastructure, what are the key infrastructure? Education, what, is, what are the key skills or what are the key constraints? Uh, water supply. So by having a very uh, firm and based on the needs approach, we hope that we can help succeed in governments to really keep a steady course on what are the key constraints beyond the varying you know, priorities or policies. So we think it works both ways. After all, we really look at practical constraints to development and we hope that we can help any government to keep a course on addressing them. How do you set your priorities? How do you identify your projects? What's the process involved in that? First of all, we have um, for any country we work if we have a, a, a strategy, which is a five-year strategy. And that looks at uh, the uh, socio-economic constraints of any country we work with and identifies the main areas and how ADB can provide support for that. Within the strategy, obviously, we start developing uh, new projects. And, and that, we always do some background work. Normally we have experts, if it's for water supply, we've done master, water master plans, for example, for Dili, Baucao, Manatuto. Manatuto, we actually even realize the water supply, Los Palos, Sam and Vikeke. So we do technical work. We discuss with the government, we make sure the government is on board, and when the government, and if and when the government wants, we're happy then to finance the actual works. But so we do a lot of technical groundwork, we present it to the government, we listen to government comments, and then if uh, the government is interested, we prepare the project. You mentioned about the, the, the fact that your work involves a lot of technical work. Do you work with uh, international partners or companies, for instance, from overseas? Uh, not those who are not based in Timor-Leste. Right. I, I think it's a combination. Let's say you want to design um, a good water system for Dili. You need some international best practices, so you would need, you want to bring innovation, the state-of-the-art technology. So normally we bring in, we have brought in some international experts to look at that. But it needs to be combined. You, you can't say, I'll just take the approach done in whichever city X and bring it to Delhi and do it. So you need to combine with an understanding of the local situation, the local priorities, the local social and economic context. So we always bring in national experts, national consultants, and we sort of merge the two. 
let me also say, by being the Asian Development Bank, the Asian uh, uh, sort of bank in the region, we also bring not only experts and consultants. Very often we facilitate dialogue, for example, some cities in Indonesia or in other countries which may have gone through the same process. We ask uh, government officials, um, um, city staff to come and dialogue. That, I think, brings an extra benefit to the government to have facilitate a peer-to-peer -peer dialogue. So it's a combination international experts, national experts, as well as trying to leverage knowledge which is in other institutions in the region. As an institution, what challenges, if there's any, have you, have you found in, in implementing uh, the work, the, the projects that you do in Timor-Leste? I think uh, well, some challenges. One, I guess, as I mentioned, uh, Timor-Leste is still a, a very young and a new country, so obviously uh, it takes time to build institutions and to have a track record of experience. So one is probably one challenge is to complement common institutions, common agencies, ministries in areas where we're still building capacity. So we try to complement that and to build the capacity. A challenge more practical and say, for example, in the road sector, it's also the geophysical nature of the island. Uh, we've all unfortunately experienced after very heavy rains, the soil tends to move and so there can be some damages. So I think there's also the challenge of making sure a constant oversight and, man and um, operation and maintenance to make sure that despite the difficult geophysical uh, context of the island, we can bring new technological solutions to address these. Um, how much has ADB uh, invested or spent on East Timor so far? So far we've been, uh, I think, uh, all in all, we started by providing some grants and then uh, since the 2011-12, uh, Timor-Leste graduated to borrowing given the national GDP increase due the oil revenues. I think so far we probably have provided around half a billion or maybe a little bit less, but uh, into between grants and, and loans since the very beginning, since Timor-Leste so recover independence. And to finish the, the conversation, would you please share with us some of the success stories ADB has had uh, since, since uh, the presence of ADB in Timor Leste? Right. Well, one uh, success story, and we can show some pictures, is that now you go to Manatutu or you go to Pante Macassar, you open the tab and people have, at the household level, have water, which is a tremendous, tremendous uh, improvement when you look at the household level, especially, I think, for women who are most of the time the ones responsible for the household uh, chores. So water is definitely a roads. Uh, when I arrived here three years ago, I remember the first time I went to Baucau, Oof, it was a very long journey, probably maybe six hours, very heavy. It's still on the way, but the last time I was there on the 1st of May, it took probably less than four hours. So travel distance are definitely being reduced very significantly. Finally, because after all, this is all about people. I think we had worked with Sefope to mm, increase the capacity and, and provide skills to youth in, in a number of uh, training centers. I was very happy when I had met some of the, especially the girls, but also the boys who had been trained and had acquired skills and found jobs because of that. So it's nice to see some concrete uh, results and I've been able to witness that. And so I think we're very proud to have been helping the government in this journey together. What does ADB have uh, planned uh, for, for Timor-Leste in the future? Uh, I think I mentioned some, there are still some challenges ahead uh, and I think there are three main challenges or, or probably more but I would group them into three. One is to 
uh, make sure the revenues and the fiscal space increases and we're providing technical assistance. We understand the government is working on, uh, on the Tassimane project also to bring more revenue. So it's important to create fiscal space. The second is to work on infrastructure and we are here to keep partnering in the road sector, but we would like also to support the water and sanitation, which I believe is probably the priority number one at the moment of Timorese families. We are happy to provide support in the energy sector or to keep supporting the, the skills and the technical education. And finally, there is the whole area, yes, of capacity building, so both in terms of a line agency and education, there also we are happy to provide support and to keep uh, sort of uh, making sure that the young Timorese have the best opportunities once they reach the age of founding a family, getting a job and leading a happy life. So we, we, the three areas were providing support in all the three of them and I think it will take some time but I'm sure Timor Less is on the right course. This has been a very interesting conversation and thank you very much for sharing us um, all the information about what ADB is doing and also what ADB is, uh, is seeing and also planning for the future. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Yemen will keep you up to date with the latest events happening across the ASEAN nations through its English news program, ASEAN News. ASEAN News, fresh, updated and accurate. The Indonesian police arrested an American, two Spaniards and two Russians for selling drugs on the holiday island of Bali. The Philippines loaded shipping containers, believed to contain mislabeled Canadian waste, onto a ship bound for Vancouver. ASEAN News, soon on GMN. Thanks for giving us your time. Could you please tell me about yourself and what you do in the office? Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Adal Jiza Marsa. Uh, I've been working for ADB for a year. This year it will be uh, eight years old. Uh, eight years with ADB, I mean. And my role in ADB is a senior finance and administration officer. So I'm providing support to the country director, Paul Spantigazes, for overall smooth operation for this office. Uh, my role is including the um, budget management, uh, personnel management, overall administration in this office. So I'm really focused on institutional uh, responsibility, but I also working uh, external with the counterpart uh, to, to provide some support with the external counterpart like uh, government through coffee association with uh, ADB as uh, I'm uh, just uh, assigned in two years ago joining uh, as an audit committee for Association Coffee. Association Coffee is a, one of uh, technical support uh, project activity from ADB. So I'm volunteering, uh, volunteer to work with Coffee Association. That's my, my support for the counterpart. Aside from that, uh, uh, we also take uh, some taking part some responsibility sub, uh, some responsibility of the country directors like uh, collaboration internal and external uh, the collaboration with the internal uh, internal is overall ADB so I'm trying to coordinate a consultation with the all ADB country offices uh, uh, in Asia and Pacific but particularly in Pacific, all Pacific, to, to reform guideline procedure. Because my important role here to support country directors to ensure that policy and guideline is implementing properly. 
So that's the, my important roles in ADB. And uh, internally, as I say, that I'm full support of overall uh, institutional uh, work that uh, assigned to Paulus Pantigatis. And what is the role? Uh, what is the role of Mr. Paulo in your work? Uh, country director is the number one in this office. In uh, in, in Timor Leste, he is the number one. So in ADB. Uh, we had uh, two categories of uh, position, uh, like uh, project. It means that the other side uh, internal is like institutional. He's also taking uh, responsibility for overall uh, operations of the office. Aside from that, and then he's also looking overall project. That uh, project, but I mean the government project that support uh, financing by the uh, ADB. So overall, in terms of personal staff, benefit, budget, that's all uh, overall uh, responsibility of Paulus Pantigati. And then we divided the all tasks to each relevant staff to take care of some part of uh, his job. And how is it like working with Mr. Paulo? Well, for me, Paul is a great supervisor. And then since I've been here for eight years with ADB, Paul is the third supervisor. But and then uh, this year, he is going to complete the three years, because normally country director is assigned for three years in ADB for each country resident missions or special office, ADB special office. and then. This year is, is completely three years. So I've been working with him for three years. He's a great supervisor. I'm really very pleasure working with him. Uh, he's very friend and friendly and nicely to everyone, especially all staff. His staff is very nice. And in terms of collaboration, he's very reliable to approach in any sector, in all sectors, as long as uh, that's improving and develop our work is very, very supportive. Hello. Hello. Nice How to are you? you? Nice good. to meet you. I'm How good. are you? I'm good, thanks. Thank you for joining the program. You are welcome. Have a seat, please. Thank you. How long have you been working with ADB? Well, I joined with ADB since 2017. I think today is uh, my two years anniversary with this organization. And what do you do uh, in your office? My role is uh, mainly to provide administrative support, operational support to our country director, and also some uh, administrative support uh, in relating to project ad uh, administration. Working with a diplomat like uh, Mr. Paolo. What has been your experience? What can you say about Mr. Paolo? To me, our country director is, uh, he is not just, he's not uh, just a director, but he's also a friend to us, uh, who is always motivate uh, his staff to keep uh, growing. And is that how he, he works with everyone in, in, in the office? Yeah, that's what I can see. Thank you very much. What is your name, your position, and what you do in the office? Sure, uh, my name is Jose Pereira. Uh, I'm actually a senior project officer, infrastructure, and then I'm looking after the project, uh, like electricity project, road project, and also water supply project, which is funded by ADB. When did you join ADB? I joined ADB back in 2015, in January 2015. So that means you have been working with Mr. Paulo since his very first day of posting in Timor Leste. Sure. Uh, when I when Mr. Paulo came to Timor, I was already here for for a few years already. What can you say about working with Mr. Paulo? Uh, for my point of view, uh, Mr. Paolo is a great, a great leadership. Uh, he, he not only built the relationship with the counterpart, with the government, but he also tried to manage uh, balance with the staff here and then try to prioritize the staff uh, needs. So he is a great, great, uh, great leadership. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. This is Don Bosco Comoro Training Center, and it's being supported by ADB. Eh? So what's your role here in this training center? My name is Elstie Davids Moratu. I'm the Social Development Officer of ADB Timor-Leste Resident Mission. So it, it's, it's part of my role to support ADB work in uh, social development and gender development. It's also part of my role to assist uh, ADB uh, strategy related to social development and gender development and also to promote ADB policy and government policy. But in partnership with the social development, oh sorry, in partnership with the government, with civil society organizations, with uh, private sector organizations. So uh, my role, uh, I, I was the national project officer for uh, TFEC project. So the project called Mid-Level Skills Training Project. It was like a seven years project implementation. The project aims to fill the gap in TFET sector by strengthening selected accredited training pro providers. And Don Bosco Comoro is one, one of the recipients of the grant. Since when were you involved in this project? Uh, since the project began in 2012 until the project closed in 2018. So what's the role of Mr. Paulo in, in, in your work, especially when it's related to this project? Um, Mr. Paulo is our uh, supervisor. Uh, no, Mr. Mr. Paulo is my supervisor. He's also my mentor and my coach. He provides directive uh, direction uh, direction like support and guidance during the uh, implementation of the project. Actually when he arrived in the Timor, the project is already in the middle of the implementation, but still he provides very close guidance and support. And he also always makes sure that uh, provide uh, feedback. We receive feedback from him just to ensure that uh, project align, I mean the implementation of project align with the goals and uh, the timelines. And he also is, a, I, I will say, a, like a problem solving maker. He also uh, like a quicker decision maker. So when, when we, when during the project implementation, when we having like an issue, problem, it's faster, he provided guidance. To, during the implementations. With this training center, how many people have, since, since the assistance of ADB started, how many people have graduated from this, this center and where have they gone to after they finish from here? I, I, will, I don't have an uh, exact number of Don Bosco, but in the total for all the project implementation, actually we support not only Don Bosco, but only other, there are seven, total of seven uh, recipients. Total, uh, so far, total 2,000 of 2,500 youth were trained by the project. So the, the training course focused in uh, construction and automotive area. Uh, two key areas that is very important given the country development priority in infrastructure development. Okay. And um, how do you get all these trainees to come here? Do you do a selection together with Don Bosco Center or does Don Bosco Center do its own, its own recruitment? How do you do it? Uh, actually, the project, uh, we are uh, working through government, the Sepope is the one. Uh, Sepope is the one the implementing agency of the project. Yeah. So we sign like a agreement with Sepope, and then Sepope itself they sign agreement with all the training center, all the supported training center, include Don Bosco. The the selection process done through Sepope, and uh, of 12 million of the grant project. Uh, one mil uh, more than one, more than one million invest in uh, Don Bosco Training Center. That one is uh, include 
uh, upgrading facility and equipment of the constructions. And then one of the biggest improvement uh, for the Don Bosco Training Center is construction, establishment and construction of uh, this automotive facility workshop, which was constructed by students and teachers during, 2000, during 2013 to 2014. I mean, uh, in addition to the workshop itself, we, the project also facilitate uh, establishment of um, production unit where students can uh, use the workplace to practice, to practice their uh, skills learning. And also for the Don Bosco itself, they use the production units to, in, to generate income. First of all, tell me your position and what you do in that position. Uh, with ADB, I'm uh, as a senior project officer, and uh, my responsible uh, my responsibility here is uh, with ADB here is uh, uh, I'm actually working to support uh, the country director, uh, Mr. Paolo Spantigetti. Uh, under his guidance, uh, I'm responsible for all uh, transport project. Uh, all ADB transport projects in Timor Leste. Uh, so the transport projects, including uh, road projects, um, support on the airport, uh, and also sometimes they are related to the the sea uh, the sea transport. How close is your work with Mr. Paulo on a daily basis? Um, on daily basis. Um, uh, because uh, he's my supervisor and I'm working under his guidance, um, I'm always uh, get in touch with him uh, regularly, particularly when it comes to make some uh, um, uh, specific decisions or instructions to some projects. Then I'm always uh, seeking uh, his advice and also his guidance on how to address uh, to those, uh, those issues. What can you say about Mr. Paulo, as a leader of ADB in Timor Leste, uh, Mr. Paulo, uh, because uh, I've just joined ADB for about one and a half years, um, uh, my impressions uh, is that uh, when I joined ADB, I found that out that Mr. Paulo is actually um, uh, someone who is actually really care of. Uh, uh, his staff, so he's uh, always pay attention to on how uh, his staff has uh, adequate resources and adequate uh, capacity and, and also opportunity uh, to undertake uh, uh, their jobs. Um, some example like uh, he always give the opportunity for staff on how staff could have you know uh, opportunity to to attend some trainings and opportunity to attend some meetings, uh, and and this is this is a good for me. This is a good uh, value and also good uh, uh, things that I see from Mr. Paulo as a, as a leader, as a supervisor, because working you know to work as a team in order to achieve um, a successful uh, the people that you are working with. It's really important that they have adequate resources, adequate information, and capacity in order to work together as a team to achieve uh, uh, an objective, which means the objective of the ADB missions in this country. I have been hearing from a number of staff of the ADB that Mr. Paulo is a very nice person to work with. Now, when you work with a very nice person, there's a risk as well that sometimes you might miss deadlines, for instance, uh, because, because you have a nice leader who probably gives you a space to, to, to do things on your own. How do you guys, as a team, ensure that those things don't happen in your work? Yeah, uh, in, in, a, in an office environment, um, we all are like working uh, under like a code of conduct. We have rules and regulations that uh, engage us on how to be performed. Even though in a team, uh, uh, sometimes uh, 
uh, you know, Mr. Paolo is a nice person and he's always, you know, try to make sure that in our communications, in order to, you know, to discuss and to, you know, to uh, discuss and to uh, decide things, always in a, in, a, in, a, in a friendly environment and informal way, but uh, uh, doesn't mean that uh, we have to, you know, ignore the code of conduct uh, and rules and regulations in this office or, or ADB, you know, rules that uh, engage us. So everything we do is still within the corridor of, of rules, you know, uh, rules and regulations and code of conduct. Right now we have a uh, number of uh, transport infrastructure projects, and which including uh, rehabilitation of uh, about 350 kilometers national roads, and one of them, one of them is including uh, this uh, 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 Tasitolu Tibar uh, rehabilitation national road. That's the first one, and then the second one. Uh, is we are supporting the government uh, development uh, uh, road investment and a maintenance strategy. So this maintenance strategy is uh, on how the government can have strategy to to maintain all the completed road um, still in to be still in good conditions. And, this, and the third one is uh, ADB also going to support the government uh, on how to upgrade the Delhi International Airport. And then the fourth one is. Uh, uh, we are supporting the Minister of Transport Communications on to, to support the land transport management. In addition, uh, I'm also working to, uh, to support uh, Mr. Paolo Spantigati and under his supervision to, we are su uh, supporting numbers of government uh, ministry to uh, to support on the regional cooperation initiative, particularly support the government on how uh, on the cross-border trade facilitations between Timor Leste and Indonesia. We have heard about Mr. Spantigati and the work he is doing with his team in ADB's Delhi office. I hope you have enjoyed the program. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Francis Suni, and I'll see you in the next episode of Diplomata. Bye for now.